2015, we had our first ever Functional Aging Summit. And unbeknownst to me, sitting in the back, was this guy that I had heard of and kept hearing about and kept hearing about. People said, you've got to learn from this Dr. Osark. Who's Dr. Osark? Finally sent a couple of trainers to him. They're like, this is the best stuff we've ever seen. And here he is sitting in the back at the Functional Aging Summit. So I walk up to him, I'm like, aren't, aren't you Evan Osar? And he's like, yeah, I am, how did you know that? So well, I think I've seen you at a conference. I invited him to dinner that night, and honestly, we began a friendship ever since. Uh, he's keynoted at the summit several different times. How many of you have never seen Evan Osar before? Oh my goodness, that's amazing, that's great. Also a little bit interesting, so it's got a huge <laughs> opportunity. So, Dr. Evan Osar, if you're not familiar with, uh, has run several companies over the years, but recently the Integrative Movement Institute. And I tell, tell trainers all the time, if you have been certified and educated through the Integrative Movement Institute, there's no doubt you're in the top 5% of trainers in the world, if not the top 2%. So please get on your feet, go ahead and stand up. Alexis never made you stand up. Stand up, <laughs> give a huge applause to my great friend, Dr. Evan Osar. presentation next year. I'm like, yeah, for sure. It was June last year, about the last keynote, or the last summit. And I'm like, oh, I'm going to do it on purpose. Yeah, this is cool. I don't know what I'm going to talk about, but I've got 12 months to think about it and research it. Awesome. I'll do a little bit every single week. And I'll do, you know, by the end of the month, each month, I'll have a, a good idea. Well, Christmas comes. So, and my wife's like, so what are you talking about? I'm like, I haven't thought about it yet. But I got six months. <laughs> so you probably, probably know how this story went. And then, I, so uh, I'm watching a Jordan Peterson YouTube video about somebody asking this question. So how do you present? And he's like, well, you have to know, or you should know, ten times more about the topic than your audience. And that made me very nervous. <laughs> and Lindsay just asked me a little while ago, she's like, do you, have, do you have imposter syndrome? I'm like, yes, I do. Yes, I do. So then I met Jeff. If you can put the presentation up, James. Oh, thank you. Then I met Jeff. My wife, I, I recently, took, recently took a job in Houston, Texas. And I, was, and I quite honestly, I struggled a little bit at the job, you know, working for somebody else. I've worked for, for myself for the last 25 years. And it was new, my wife's still living in Wisconsin, I'm living down in Houston, big transition for me, lots, of, lots to think about and learn and do, and you know, very humbling experience. And then Jeff came in, and after a few sessions, Jeff says to me, he's like, I'm kind of pissed at you. I'm like, oh, okay. He's like, when I go to my AA meetings, I used to tell, or my story, used to be that the only thing I do well and did right in my life is breathe. And then you told me that I don't even breathe well. <laughs> so now you write my story. Well, Jeff's story is from the age of 13, he was a drug addict and an alcoholic. He ran, and as he came into adulthood, he ran million dollar companies. He was very successful by any stretch of the imagination. He had two wonderful kids. However, he was struggling. He said he got to the point where he couldn't eat anymore and the only thing he could do is drink. 
and he had a drink to go to sleep, he had a drink to wake up in the morning and had energy to do his job. And it got so bad after his second divorce, he said he had a drink on the counter and he had a loaded gun right next to his drink. And he said he was drinking to get enough courage to use a gun. And then he got a phone call right at that moment and it was his daughter. She's like, Dad, where are you? He's like, well, it's been a rough weekend. And she's like, Dad, it's Thursday. And he hadn't realized that he'd been drinking seven days in a row. And he passed out. And the next thing he knew, his daughter was packing up his stuff and taking him to rehab. So fast forward, he uh, recovered alcoholic. And what he does, he told me that he goes to an AA meeting every single day. And when he has days off, he'll go three times on his days off. And he said, I never would have guessed or imagined that my purpose in life is to help other men find the way. It was really cool about what Jeff said to me. He's, he's like, one of the things that they taught me that I teach them, and I think is applicable to all of us, is you don't have to have it all figured out. You don't have to do everything right. Just do the next right thing. So as we talk about purpose, and as I heard his story, as he shared his story with me, I'm like, I'm gonna leave the talk with Jeff's story. He gave me permission to share his story because he knows that his story, his purpose in life is to help other men, to keep other men from going down that same road and or ending their lives. Okay, so as we talk about purpose today, I'll share some other stories with you. I don't have all the answers about purpose. I'm not going to tell you exactly what your purpose is, but hopefully through some of these stories, you will start to recognize your purpose. And it's probably right there. You just don't recognize it right now. Okay. So whether you know your purpose, hopefully this solidifies your purpose. If you are somewhat on the fence, it helps you clarify your purpose. And if you don't know it at all, hopefully it starts you on that journey and or continues your journey. The green button. Oh, here we go. <laughs> so, what is purpose? As we define, we need to define purpose so that way we understand where we're going with this information. There's lots of diff different definitions of purpose. <laughs> All right. But first, let's look at some sober statistics. Depression is a leading cause of disability worldwide. So it's not just in our country that's suffering from de depression. One in six Americans are on antidepressants, the most commonly prescribed medications in 18 to 44 year olds. That is craziness, right? Rates of depression, anxiety, anxiety, and suicide have increased 37% over the last 20 years, and it's the 11th cause of disease, or sorry, death in our country. Think about how many people, I think it is 48,000 people a year commit suicide. And what's interesting is, they did a study where they looked at people that committed, went to commit suicide, but then they actually survived, and about 50% of them regretted it at the time they were about to commit suicide. So there's a lot of people that need help. I'm not a psychologist. I'm not even trying to play with psychologists. I'm not trying to say I have the answers. I suspect that if you are living on purpose, a lot of these stats would go down. Would you agree with that? If you had a purpose, if you knew your calling in life, you probably, even if you were depressed, you would still keep going. Would you, would you agree with that? Does that make sense? Yeah. I don't know that to be true, but I, I believe it. But I think a lot of people don't understand their purpose. So, next slide. Oops, last slide. And I love this quote by William Frank. William Frank will survive the Nazi Holocaust. Life is not primarily a quest for pleasure or a quest for power. It is the greatest task or a quest for meaning. The greatest task for any person is to find their meaning in life. And that's really what I'm here to share with you. So what is purpose? Purpose is something, the reason something is used or the definition of why you, why you have something, like a plastic bottle holds water, it maintains water. But what is the purpose of life? There's a great study, I would have you guys take a picture of this and go find this study. It's the association between life purpose and mortality. 
among U.S. adults older than age 50. So what they did is they took us a survey of 7,000 adults over the age of 50. And they defined, first they defined what is life purpose. And they defined it this way. Life purpose is a self-organizing aim that helps to stimulate goals, promotes healthy behaviors, and gives meaning to life. And I love that definition. A self-regulating aim that stimulates goals, promotes healthy behaviors, and gives meaning to life. And as we think about our purpose and what we do for our clients, we do that every single day we work with our clients. So here's what they found, that the older individuals, or those individuals they surveyed, the ones with the greatest sense of life purpose had greater longevity. And Melissa had it in her presentation today. You have twice the likelihood of increasing your, of dying, of all cause mortality, if you don't have a strong life purpose. And how many of you work with clients that you're pretty confident they don't have a strong life purpose? Yeah. What's awesome about our job, our responsibility, the things that we do with our clients, is we can help give it to them. Because we give them a purpose, a place to come, a community, a sense of accomplishment that maybe some of them never had before. That's why that study is so powerful. So even more than what we do from a fitness perspective, it's what we do to help bring purpose to these individuals' lives. And what's cool about the study too is a powerful life purpose is more important to your health than exercise. It's more detrimental, not having a life purpose is more detrimental than smoking or drinking alcohol. That's how powerful life purpose is. And they don't understand why, there's no studies on this yet, but they suspect that life, a strong life purpose, decreases all the inflammatory markers, the cortisol levels, the interleukin, the uh, cytokines. So the more you have life purpose, the healthier you will be, and likely you also make better health choices along the way, okay? That's pretty powerful. Now we should probably define or differentiate between passion because a lot of people say, do what you're passionate about. And there's different things or ways to look at passion. We, we can look at a sports game. How many of you get real passionate about sports? Yeah, I used to be that guy when I really cared about sports, which wasn't too long ago, I just don't care about it anymore. <laughs> Unfor I mean, fortunately, but unfortunately, I used to be the guy like, you know, I'm a huge Seattle Seahawks fan. And when they would win, I'd be in a really good mood. You just ask my wife. I'd be in a great mood. When they would lose, I would sit there and I would grumble and I would tick things and I would throw things and I would sit there and talk about the game and say, man, they just did this. And I'd read all the articles. It goes like obsessive, you know. So there's a lot of passion around sports and things that we have zero. She's like, how much control do you have over the game? I'm like, they should have just played better. Like zero. I have zero control over that. I get it. People are very passionate about sports. I'm very passionate about eating. <laughs> People said to me that this weekend, like, they haven't seen me in a while, like, hey, you lost a lot of weight. Wait, I'm like, that's why I lost a lot of weight, because I have an eating disorder. <laughs> because that was, we were in Nice, France, visiting my sister and my niece, and that was after I had all-you-can-eat breakfast, that was after I ate a pizza, I was going to eat that, and I actually did eat that. <laughs> so yes, I have an eating disorder, so it's better that I, I look like this than how I look if I ate that all the time. So people are very passionate about things like food. And then obviously we have the whole romanticized version of passion. But I think people overvalue passion at the expense of purpose. I think purpose is what we're all after, meaning in life, and passion comes from fulfilling your purpose. So we're going to talk about purpose and how you can find your purpose if you don't have it solidify, it, solidify it if you do have it, and help others find their purpose as well. I use the mnemonic purpose. I really don't like mnemonics, but it kind of worked out. <laughs> the first P, or the P of the purpose, is prayer. 
And if you ask the Immaculate in the Begiza, when she was a little girl, what's your purpose in life? I doubt she would say, to help the world pray. But if you don't know her story, Immaculate Ila Begiza, in 1994, she was in college, and her parents called her home from college for spring break. She's like, no, I wanna stay here with my friends. And they're like, no, you're ours, you come home and spend time with your family. Well, she went home to her family, and all the kids that stayed at the school were slaughtered because that was the beginning of the Rwandan Holocaust. And her father, her mother, two or three brothers, the only brother that wasn't killed was off at college, were killed in the Rwanda Holocaust. She was hidden by, she was a Tutsi, and she was hidden by a Hutu, the tribe that was killing everybody, slaughtering everybody. She was hidden by a Hutu priest in a three by four bathroom for 90 days with seven other women. So think about three by four, it's probably just a little bit bigger than the square that I'm standing in. And she had with her a rosary that her father gave her. And she prayed the rosary every single day, multiple times per day. She heard the killers outside the house where she was hidden, saying to her, we killed your family, we will find you and kill you as well. They searched the house multiple times and never found her. That's the power of prayer. She survived the Rwanda Holocaust and she's been instrumental in helping Rwanda heal from this devastation and bring the power of prayer to others. And if you ever follow her, she talks a lot about praying the rosary. And if you're not into prayer, another way of thinking about prayer or connecting to God or connecting to source is just getting quiet. So meditation or just taking a walk. Just get quiet and see what comes up. We're inundated in our world today by social media, by noise. You see everybody walking around with headphones in. And most people probably aren't blocking out noise. They're probably listening to something. We can find our purpose when either we connect through prayer or we become quiet through meditation or we just take a quiet walk and just be alone with our thoughts and see what comes up. So the first way to find your purpose is through prayer. You is uniqueness. All of us are born with a special gift. Now, all of us know what that special gift is or have fostered that special gift. When my friend Debbie first came to see me as a patient, she came years later, we were friends, and she's like, hey, happy anniversary of our friendship, with the, or the day we first met. And I'm like, how did you know what day it was? And she's like, because it was your birthday. I'm like, how did you know it was my birthday? She's like, because you told me. <laughs> I don't really tell people my birthday, it's March 6th. So, <laughs> but she was, there's a connection I had to her from that first moment I met her. Debbie was a psychologist. And we would go, when we became friends, we'd go out to lunch every single week. And people, the waitress would come up and start telling us, telling her, her life story. Like she just had a gift of helping people or having people just talk to her. And I would be like, yo, go away, go away, just get out of here. But that was a gift she had. Debbie's story was when she was a young girl, her brother was got very sick. He was a healthy kid, and all of a sudden he got very sick. He ended up having muscular dystrophy, which is a very slow degra degradation of the muscular system, and she watched her, her brother die. And her parents were almost resentful towards her that she survived and he didn't. And I remember asking her, why did you become a psychologist? And she's like, I couldn't help my brother, I wanna help people. And she had a unique gift, as I said, of being able to listen, being able to know the right thing to say, being empathetic but not taking on people's pain. Because how many of you would align yourself that you're an empath? You feel like you're an empath, yes. And how many of you that are empaths take on your clients' issues. Yeah, many of us do, and that's why oftentimes there's so much burnout in our industry, and even in psychology or doctors, because you, as an empath, you take on your client's pain, their suffering, their anxiety. She had a great ability to be an empath and not take that on. She's a wonderful, wonderful woman, and 
Unfortunately, she passed away last year from, from a lung disease, but it was really awesome to be able to have her in my life for that period of time. And obviously she's still with me in a certain extent. So what I want you to also think about is what are those unique gifts that you have that make you special? And even if you, if you don't know what they are off the top of your head, what are the things that other people say about you? You're a great fill in the blank. You're a great communicator. You're a great listener. You're a great support. You're a great, you know how to put things together. You know how to make sense of things. There's something that makes you unique that is probably where your purpose is or will help you fulfill your purpose. R, reflection. A few years ago, quite a few years ago, I was listening to Wayne Dyer's audiobook on I Can See Clearly Now. So it's basically a recap of his life and all the things in his life and how they all sort of aligned to help him find his purpose and keep him on the path of his purpose. And if you've listened to, has anybody listened to that book or heard of that book? Yeah. It's an amazingly amazing story. And I remember listening to it and thinking to myself, I really like you, Wayne Dyer, but I don't like you right now. Because your stories are so amazing. I don't have stories like your stories. I don't have these connections that you do. And then one day, I was thinking about some things that happened to me. When I was in eighth grade, I was in Catholic, sorry, I was in Catholic school until eighth grade. And I remember when I was about 12 years old, the principal, my mother, the principal who I didn't like, she was a nun, she was very mean. Back in the day, we could actually spank kids and <laughs> do things you probably shouldn't be doing to kids, but we survived. And she's sitting with, standing with, with my mother, and she says to my mother, Evan would make a really great priest. And I was like, I was still, still kind of young. I wasn't, wasn't really into girls yet, but I'm like, no, no. And for many years after that, I would have like literally nightmares, nightmares about that conversation. So fast forward, I'm in college. I'm with my best friend. He's getting married, and we're standing in the back of the church, just he and I, and then his mother-in-law comes back. And she's like, she walks in, she stops, and I didn't like her, she's kind of, I'm not a super awesome woman, but whatever. <laughs> She's like, oh my goodness, Evan, you would make such a great priest. And I'm like, ah. And I was a single guy there and didn't have a lot of dates back in those days. And then I was speaking at a conference a few years after that. And this woman comes up to me after that, and she says to me, can I have a couple of minutes of your time? She's like, there's something about you. Did you know that your name, Evan, is Gaelic for John? And John is messenger, and he was a messenger for Christ. And there's something about you that is very special. Can I do a prayer over you? And I wasn't really into prayer back then. I'm like, okay. And it made me think of those seemingly unrelated stories that are related. And when I look at it and think about my purpose that I didn't know until I started putting this talk together, my purpose is really just to be a messenger for God. And I'm not going to go around with my Bible and talk to people about God unless they want to hear about that version of God, but to meet people where they're at, to be the light in the darkness, like my wife says to me all the time, just be the light in the darkness for people. Because you don't know people's story. You don't know where they're coming from. You don't know the struggles they're going through. Just be that person that listens, that accepts them. And that's what you all do. So just reflect on your life. Reflect on those things that don't seem like they're connected because there probably is a connection between those stories of your life. Next P, pain. We've all seen the news about natural disasters. Has anybody ever been through a natural disaster? Like, oh yeah, a couple people. Yes, yeah, so you've been through that. I never was. You know, fortunately, I, I never was. And I never really got it. You know, and I'm, I'm embarrassed to say, like, I never really got it. I went to school out in, in Davenport, Iowa, and it was right along the Mississippi River. So that every few years, it would flood, and all the houses along the river would get flooded and destroyed. And I would hear about places like Tornado Alley out in the Midwest, or the Far West, that like, wow, these people's houses, they have the risk of getting their house destroyed every single year. Or people that live on the coast, you have the likelihood of a hurricane many, many times a year. Like, why would people live there? Why don't people just sell their house? Why don't they just move? It never even dawned on me, like, well, maybe they can't afford it. Maybe nobody else wants to buy their house. Until a 
friend of ours, a good close colleague of ours, Jana, her house was destroyed in Hurricane, was it Ian mm -hmm. last year? Mm -hmm. Hurricane Ian. And it, and it hit me like, wow, she's got nowhere to go. She's just her and her family. This is her house. This is her family. And what's interesting interesting story about Janet is when Janet first we first met her, it was at a conference like this. She came through a certification program, and she was very, or even before she came through her certification program, she says to us, Hey, what's my return on investment? Very legit question. But she said it in a very confrontational way. She, but it wasn't really confrontational, it was just direct. And I never thought in a million years she would ever be part of our inner circle, but she came through a certification course and she became part of our inner circle. And now what Jana says her purpose is, is she's helping her community heal. She's going through some spirituality work, she's helping them spirituality, spiritually, and she's like, really what I do is I help them breathe better. And I learned the breathing from you guys. Some of you heard Janice's talk this morning about breath. She's like, I just help people breathe better, and through that, she helps people heal. She's helping her community heal. Her husband is an accountant, he's done maybe 300, she said, approximately 300 taxes for free for the community to help the community. And she said, so, so I said to her, I'm like, so the hurricane almost helped you redefine your purpose. She's like, it absolutely did. And she's like, I'm going to be able to use my pain of this situation, the anxiety, the stress, the, the, the unknown to help drive me going forward. And she's been asked by many different groups to come and help them do spiritual work and connecting them and helping the community heal. So many of us, many of your clients, they have had pain, trauma, maybe sexual, physical, emotional trauma. Lindsay shared a story about one of her clients whose husband killed her. You know, we, we don't know people's story. Use your pain to help others. It's not fair what happened to you, it's not fair what's happened to other people, but we can use the story of our lives, that pain, to help find our purpose and help others so they may not have to go through the same things that you and, that you and I have gone through. Next letter, O, opportunity. All of us have opportunities, and you've heard that the proverb, you know, the proverbial saying, when one door closes, another one opens. And Sarah has been working with us for 17 years, and when people see my information online, or they, they hear me speak, they're like, oh, I wanna come see you and work with you. I'm like, you're gonna come see me, but you're gonna work with Sarah, because she's the most amazing fitness professional I've ever met. She's better than me at this work. And Sarah's story was she was a professional dancer. And she was going on a road trip with a dance company from Chicago at the time, out east. It was in the middle of winter. It was, it was snowing and it was dark at night. They're going through the, the, the hills of Pennsylvania. They skid, the van rolls, they end up upside down in a ditch. They literally had to cut themselves out of the seatbelts to get out of, out of the van. The head of the dance company was also a patient of mine. She's pretty direct. She's like, we need to rent a car and keep going. And these girls, and she, Sarah, and her fellow dancer are like, we're injured. We, we just, we're going through some trauma. We just need to go back home with our families. And the dance instructor did not like that. So she went on the trip and Sarah and the other dancer went back home. So Sarah was wondering like, what am I gonna do with my career? And she had thought about, should I be a personal trainer after my dance career is over or should I go to physical therapy school. So she came to see me for her injuries related to that accident. And as we started to work together, I referred her to Janice for work. Janice is like, hey, why don't you ask Sarah if she's interested in working with us? And I asked Sarah, invited her to be part of our company. She's like, I would love to. And I asked Sarah recently, I'm like, Sarah, what do you think your purpose in life is? I know this is kind of a tough question. She's like, my purpose is to learn what I can take from my parents, my grandparents, and improve upon the things that we didn't work, build upon the foundation of successful things, and then pass that on to my kids. And then as she's talking to me about how she works with her clients, I'm like, Sarah, do you know you do the exact same thing with your clients? 
that you work with in her clinic. So think about the opportunities. She had an opportunity that closed, her dance career was over, and another dance, or I should say another opportunity opened up for her. An opportunity to change people's lives on a whole different level. So think about opportunities that maybe your gym closed, maybe you, you're struggling in getting clients, maybe you're changing careers. There's always an opportunity where one closes, there's another one that's waiting for you. Look for those opportunities to find your purpose as well. The S of purpose is serve. And you know, I want to thank Dan and Cody for this opportunity to share with this community. It's really our favorite community to share with. This is our favorite event to be at. I want you to just give Dan and Cody a round of applause just for all of you. Thank you. They serve their community by putting this event on. Some of our best friends in the industry, including Dan and Cody, Jackie Bachmeyer. The reason why I'm in, I'm in Texas is because of Jackie Bachmeyer, because you know I spend so much time with her and her team down there at Evolution Fitness and Wellness that I got to know Texas, and then I took a job down there as well. You know, these wonderful ladies, some of them are right here. So many of you have become really close friends and colleagues of mine because of Dan and Cody serving our community by bringing this event together to bring like-minded individuals together. You guys do this every single day. You serve your communities. And to me, when we think about purpose, there is no greater purpose than to serve people. And one of the most noble professions is our profession because we meet people where they're at, we meet people that have been given up on, especially this older population, we meet people that maybe not haven't found solutions anywhere else. So remember what you do every single day. You probably are very close to living your purpose, even if you don't think you are, by serving others. Again, serve where you are right now, and if it's not your right purpose, or it's not the ultimate purpose, this could be a stepping stone to that. So I wanna thank you guys for all you do in serving this population. And then finally, the E of purpose is extraordinary. I don't know who said this quote, so I'm sort of taking it now. We're not born to do extraordinary things, we're born to do the ordinary things extraordinarily well. We're not born to do extraordinary things, we're born to do the ordinary things in an extraordinary level. When Janice was five years old, she was diagnosed with migraine headaches. Fast forward, she would spend many years from five to the age of 25 with migraine headaches, taking medication, ibuprofen every single day, drinking Coca-Cola, doing all these different interventions to help her migraine headaches. When I first met her, she was a student of mine. We didn't date until after she was no longer a student of mine. We started to work together. And she mentioned, she came to me because of shoulder issues. And we started to look at her breathing, and I wasn't really into breathing, and I, I just noticed like, hey, you're not really breathing that well, and you're very compressed through your rib cage. So we changed her breathing, was really the first thing we did. And obviously we did all the exercises, changed the number of exercises, changed how she approached her exercise program. Within two years, she was off all medications. And we, when we moved to out of Chicago a couple years ago, we found that the last bottle of ibuprofen, so we moved in 2000, the bottle had expired in 2005. So it was the last time she had taken any ibuprofen. Janice now shares breathing with a passion. And this was her at one of the functional aging summits where she had just taught this class breathing and that woman right there, she's like, I haven't been able to get my arm above 90 degrees in at least a year and her arm went up to about 160 degrees. And that was just Janice's reaction and, and, and she was very tearful. And Janice shared the story about one of her clients who passed away recently. And when he first came to her, he came to her because his trainer had referred him to Janice to help his golf game. So, he, so she worked on him and a lot of what she did with him was breathing. Well, he was diagnosed in 2020 with terminal cancer. He was in the hospital, and when he's in the hospital, nobody could see him because this is during COVID, he texted Janice. He's like, I'm in a lot of pain, what can I do? And she's like, breathe. So she took him through some breathing. And even when he got out of the hospital, the last week before he passed away, he's like, this is our last visit. I want to thank you for all you've done. That's doing ordinary things in an extraordinary level. 
And I know each of you has a story just like Janice's story. You do things at an extraordinary level, and you think it's just ordinary, but it's not. You've changed somebody's life by what you've done, by doing it at an extraordinary level. So if you, again, if you don't know your purpose, just keep being and doing the ordinary things at an extraordinary level. Prayer, get quiet to see what comes up. Uniqueness, understand and identify your unique skills, traits, and person that you are. Reflection, take time to reflect on your life and the things that people have said to you, the stories that you've seen. Use your pain, if you have pain in your life, use that pain to help serve others. Use opportunities, if the door is closed for you, use that opportunity to take you in a whole new direction. Uh, another story I heard about opportunity is I heard a podcast recently and CrossFit, this guy that used to be a, a high level CrossFit coach. And he had posted something just in support of another CrossFit coach. And in this day and age, he got canceled and he was fired from CrossFit. And he's like, during the time he got fired from CrossFit, he had a severance package for a few months. His wife got terminally sick, so he's able to be home and take care of her. During that time also, he went to theology school, and now he does a ministry for men. And he said to the podcast host, if I never left CrossFit, I would never be doing the work that I'm doing now. Him being fired was a springboard for him for doing the work in his real purpose. So keep those opportunities in mind. And remember, serve your clients what you do every single day, and do the ordinary things in extraordinary fashion. And somewhere in there, or several of those, is where you'll find your purpose. And I'll leave you with a quote by my favorite poet, Ralph Waldo Emerson. He says, the purpose of life is not to be happy. The purpose of life is to be useful, to be honorable, to be compassionate, to know that you have lived and lived well. I love that quote, and I'll leave you with one final thought from Ralph Waldo Emerson. His most famous poem was called Success, and it might as well just been called Purpose. When I was in my second year of practice, one of my patients, my early patients, give me this poem. And I read it, and I'm like, oh, this is a really great poem. And then I just put it in a drawer. And then when we were moving, I found the poem. And I read it. And I knew then why she gave it to me. The last two lines of the poem, to know that even one life has breathed easier, that is success. Think about what we do every single day. We have the opportunity to help people breathe easier, both figuratively as well as literally help them breathe easier. I want to thank you for all you guys do for our industry. Thank you for all you've done for me personally, for my wife as well. Thank you for all those clients' lives who you will touch. Thank you for living on purpose, even if you don't know 100% what that purpose is. And before we finish up here, I'd like to invite Lindsay, if you don't mind, Janice, if you don't mind, 